We're now going to move on to another example of the role of uh, technology, and uh, particularly uh, in the regards to uh, the role of cobots. And uh, I'm delighted to uh, welcome to the stage Mark Allen, who is going to uh, start us off on this discussion about uh, what roles could robotics have in delivering care. Good morning, everybody. hope you can hear me. Um, before I actually start talking, we're going to be asking you some questions throughout this. So if you could get out your phones and uh, open the exceptionally good conference app that you should have on your phones, because you'll need that. And I think you need to navigate to our plenary session, tap on that, and then the question will come up. And I'll, I'll be asking that in, in a few seconds. Uh, and then if you keep it open, because we've got another one later. Um, so um, my name's Mark Allen. Uh, I work in commissioning in Hampshire County Council and I'm really excited to be here today because um, what we're going to be talking about is a really good segue from what Jane's just been saying around home care and technology and how we can help the workforce and things like that. We're going to be talking about cobotics. Now, a number of people probably won't know what cobotics are. Hopefully throughout this discussion you'll get an idea of what cobotics are and what we're doing with it. Um, I'm going to put into place some of the context and my colleague, Steve Careful, will come out and actually tell you what cobots are. Uh, my, my job is as a commissioner, so I don't know the detail, but Steve is the person who, who knows all of these things. So if we can load up the question, please. So, um, there's some interesting, interesting things. So I think the majority there are saying no role at all, um, but it's fairly split, so we'll come back to that later. So, um, as I said, Steve and I are going to be talking about cobotics. Um, and I'm going to begin with this slide. And those of you at a similar age to me will understand the, 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 the term in there, Houston, we have a problem. And I think that stems really from anyone who works in social care like I do, and health or any other public sector area, know that there are a range of problems that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. For us, they're very multifactorial. So we're seeing an ageing population, we're seeing complexity in that ageing population, so the needs of those individuals are changing significantly. We've seen very strong financial constraints placed on local authorities, uh, which means we're having to do things differently to the way we've done before. Some of them we don't want to do, some of them we, we do because of changing circumstances. And then critically, and in line with what Jane was saying, there's some challenges around workforce. And those are some of the things we want to focus on now. So in terms of Hampshire, so the, face, the, the challenges we're facing particularly, and to give you some of the context in terms of what we're talking about here, is that um, over the next few years, over the next five years, the, pe the number of people aged over 65 will probably grow in the, in the region of about 14%. And those over 85 will probably grow by a staggering 30%. So those individuals that are living longer, we'd hope with healthy lives, but actually the reality is that they're probably going to have care needs and more complex care needs, and particularly around dementia. So those complexities of growing and comorbid disease are becoming very commonplace amongst our older population. For Hampshire County Council itself, some of the context and financially, since 2010, we've delivered reductions in our budgets in nearly 200 million pounds. It's a staggering amount of money for one local authority, and that's just in social care. And over the next two years, we're looking at a reduction of in the region of about 43 million, and we don't see that changing any time soon. We have these transformation programs that go on a two-year cycle, and they will continue. We've calculated also that in terms of the workforce, by 2023-24, we're probably looking at something in the region of a shortfall in that work, care workforce of about seven to 8,000 individuals. That, in its, that is just huge. And the issue for us isn't so much, a, isn't the, the part of it is financial in terms of being able to find the funding to pay for care and pay for the, the right level of care. Um, but it's also that actually that care workforce isn't there. As we saw, there's a 10% um, um, uh, vacancy rate in uh, home care. You know, that equates to a lot of individuals. So what it means is that we have to find radical solutions. So if for us, how do we focus on enabling people who are actually delivering care to focus on those activities that only humans can do and that, so that we can take away the, um, 
the, the, the sort of more mundane activities and use technology to, to deliver that. It also means that we want to ensure that the human carers actually do the work that enhances the experience of service users and also those carers themselves and their families and is attractive and rewarding. And how can we use technology to actually enhance that and develop and deliver that for individuals, both for, for people who uh, receive services and those that deliver it? So we do have to accept that we need to address and approach these things in radical ways and that to ensure that actually social care in our area and across the country really is sustainable. Steve will describe in a moment what we're planning to do in the area of robotics, but this work follows some of our successful deployments of things like the Amazon Echo, um, which we've talked about previously, which is an exciting area of development for people who can control their own lives in different sorts of ways, which are very different ways to what we've experienced previously in social care. Um, and that we can and it builds on our experience of delivering, te using technology-enabled care to deliver social care in very broad ways. We deliver care through technology to over 11,000 individuals across Hampshire, and probably about uh, at least half of those have tech only. So these are individuals who have had an assessed care need, who are having technology supporting them principally, um, but also as part of the package. We also recognise that the challenge we face here does mean that we'll have to address some sort of some knotty problems, which is actually if we use technology, and we, we do this already, but things like cobotics and some of these radical steps do challenge our notions of what work is, what skills people need to have, what tasks they perform and how they do that. And so we actually, part of the trial that we're undertaking is he's going to be questioning some of those things. It's going to be questioning some assumptions that some of them may be long established. It's important to stress, though, that this isn't the only thing we do, that in, in line with using technology in able care, we are approaching some very traditional things, so we've got a very strong strength-based approach to delivering care. We've got a, a fairly well-established demand management and prevention programmes, and we do have new frameworks to working with home care and residential care, and we continue to work with health partners in, in, in many ways around delayed transfers of care uh, and winter pressures, for example. So, how do we shape technology agenda? Well, that's a real big issue for us. So, a, 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 a key driver for running this Pathfinder or this trial is to help us remain in control of that, to help us work in partnership with a number of organisations to drive the agenda and drive development. We've developed a very firm principle in the county of focusing on the desired outcomes for service users, the care of, for carers, the council and the system as a whole. We call it our three, three tiers of outcomes. As technology develops fast, so there's a risk that offered solution, we are offered solutions without fully understanding them and that at some point in the future, probably not too long, we say actually this isn't doing quite what we want it to do. So our principles are we want to work with people to actually both understand the development of the solutions but also what the problem is and how we can approach that problem effectively and collectively and collaboratively. So rather than respond to technology providers who are seeking to sell us a solution, we want us to understand how our cha challenges can be cost effectively and sustainably solved and then we will commission stuff for the longer term. Steve will now outline our Cobots Pathfinder is all about, and I'll hand over to Steve. Thank you very much.